now I know how to do a really good winged eyeliner. Yeah. Now I know how to, you know, make a snatched base. That's yeah. what snatched. snatched. <laughs> That's what we <laughs> called it. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Hannah. And my name is Carolyn. And welcome to our podcast, Close Knit with Carolyn and Hannah. Yay. Round of applause. We Yay. did it. I can't clap and do my mic. Neither can I. Okay. I don't want you to either. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. How many years have we been talking about oh, doing goodness. this podcast? How many? Three or four. Yeah. Something along that lines. Yeah, we're finally here. We're doing it. Yeah. We kind of already recorded an episode before this, but we hated it so much <laughs> that we're re-recording it now. So There you go. You've got to have trial and error. Yeah. To see how things... Absolutely. So it's our first, second first episode. Yes. Right. Technically our second, but first, yes. first. Yeah. First episode. Yeah, it's yeah. very cool to finally be able to do this. Yeah, so um, you might know us from a little video that we do um, for her boutique, Mackenzie's. Yeah, I own a little boutique, Mackenzie's. It's awesome in Sartell. Yes, so you're the person in front of the camera, and I'm the person behind the camera. And I know you don't like this all the time, but she is known as Hannah Banana. That's how everybody, Hannah Bananas in the house. She says that every <laughs> single time I come into work on Friday, every single time. If you're in the store while I come into work, she does it very specific too. It's always Hannah Bananas in the house. I'm like, what's with the I don't know. I just have a habit of doing that. I think that when you have, well, uh, any... You guys might know this who have kids. You just always like to find that opportunity to embarrass them a little bit. And it really does. Why? I don't know. It's just a little announcement. I'm a Leo. You think I'd like attention. Yeah, well, I'm an Aries, so I like it. So there you go. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, um, boy. Here we go. For two fire signs. Two fire signs in one room, <laughs> one podcast. Mother, daughter on top of it. Yeah. I mean, because we mostly get along, but sometimes we, we have little disagreements. We're, f we're fire signs. Yeah. We make up, though, pretty quickly. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> that's not what this is the, about. The, yeah, this podcast is not going to be just rambling, okay? Our first one that we filmed was, and that's why we're refilming it. Yes. Because I had a little idea, and I did take some inspiration from another mother-daughter podcast. They're based in Australia. I'm forgetting the name, but on their first ever podcast episode, they talked about some of their firsts in life. Yeah. So I thought, hey, that's like not a bad idea. Oh, that is a good idea. So I wrote down a list of questions for us to answer. Uh, um, and think of your first as you're kind of listening to ours. Yes. Because it'll spark little or trigger <laughs> memories. Yeah. Of you, maybe whenever growing up or just your, a lot of them are later in life for me because I kind of didn't do very much growing up. <laughs> bum, bum. Womp, womp. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about that stuff. And then we've got two little things that we're going to do at the very end of every episode. We're going to be talking about our three favorites of the week. Mm -hmm. could literally be anything, a trend, an experience clothing item, anything. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to also pick a card that has a little message on it. Yeah. And that's going to be kind of the ending is just left with a nice little message. We'll leave so. you with a message to start your week off right. Yes. Right. Because so we all need that. Yes. So make sure to stay until the end. Um, if you're watching, you can also listen to us uh, in the car. If you have Spotify, uh, you can listen to us. And if you're listening, you can watch us as well. We're on YouTube. Go ahead and give us a subscribe and a follow. And well, we would love that. All That'd of that awesome. good stuff. So yeah. very good. What do you want to start with, <laughs> Hannah Banana? <laughs> okay. So let's start off with this question. All right. What is the first trend you ever followed? With clothing or? With 
clothing, fashion, that kind of trend. Okay, well, mine kind of dates all the way back to, and I'm going to go with hair, obviously. Obviously. Um, Mine kind of dates all the way back to fifth grade. Wow. And I don't know how old I was in fifth grade. Can't remember that, but I know it was fifth grade. I was kind of a bullied child, a little bit. I feel like we all were back then. Womp, womp. Hon- I'm kidding. I'm honestly, kidding. no. And I'm not saying that to get pity or oh, no, but I, I feel like it. we all kind of back in those days because I was born in '67. I'm not afraid to say I'm almost 57, um, but bullied a little bit, and I ended up getting a haircut. And at the time, some of you might remember Charlie's Angels was a big deal. And uh, Farrah Fawcett was just like my idol. She, I have a poster of her that hangs in my closet. Um, and I loved her hair. And so I went to a little, it was like a little salon in someone's home in our neighborhood. And she kind of did the Farrah Fawcett haircut on me. And it changed my life, I can honestly say. The kids stopped bullying me. The girls were nice to me. The guys started liking me. And I kind of had the same Farrah Fawcett version. Like I switched it up a little over the years, probably, yeah, since fifth grade. But I think for me, the the hair trend was the biggest trend that, I mean, literally changed my life. I mean, it definitely looks good on you and it works for you. I think a lot of people notice you from your hair. Yeah, probably. And I'm, and I don't care if I'm, I'm going to be that little old lady on the Titanic walking to the edge with her long hair. And I don't know how old she was, like a hundred or something in the movie. (laughs) I'm just gonna, I just want to keep my long hair, God willing, because I just love hair. I'll just put it up in a bun or something like Caroline Ingalls, the older I get. (laughs) Um, So yeah. I don't know who that is. You know who Caroline Ingalls is. I don't. (gasps) Oh no, really? I little don't house recognize on the, the Little name. House on the Prairie. It was the mom on Little House on the Prairie. I only watched that once when oh. I was a kid. Okay, yeah, that's see, and the, there we go. The difference here, but twenty-four be year old out of this. Yeah. Oh, Little House. I mean, yeah. If you're my age, everybody knows Little House on the Prairie. I know the vibe, the aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, Laura Ingalls, but she she was from Minnesota, wasn't she? Yes, Wal- I know her. Walnut Grove. I know her. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm off topic again. <laughs> Anna, what was your first my your first trend? My first trend was also not a clothing trend that I followed because as we know, back in the day when I was a kid, I didn't have any options for cool, trendy, <laughs> okay, plus now. size clothing. Okay, now. I had to shop at Torrid and get business casual clothing to wear in middle school. So... <laughs> You know this. <laughs> I don't think it was business. I don't. It definitely was middle school. I mean, the the flats, ball, but I think ballet, ballet flats, <laughs> the blazers. <laughs> Some of that's, I guess that's in for me. <laughs> now it is. Now yeah. I could wear it. Yeah. But yeah. in middle school, a lot of people thought I was going to college. <laughs> So I could not follow trends. I, I, I apologize for that. A lot of it was me. It's totally fine. Making you. It's totally fine. Things like Forever 21 did not have my size back then. Yeah. So I just had to suffer through it. To go. You were the best dressed kid, though, in preschool, kindergarten, well, you all of grade school. Yeah. I lived at Gymboree. I did not buy anything. I was a stay-at-home mom. I did not buy much for myself, but I made sure you and Miles, her brother, had really the best of the, I just loved oh, dressing yeah. you. You were my little doll. I, I was I was fly. Yeah, as a you, kid. You you had, yeah, great stuff. Yeah. You looked I had great. Good hair. Yep. Yeah, good style. And then middle school hit. <laughs> And nothing fit me. (laughs) Dang middle school. Those are the tough years. Yeah. So my trend that I followed then was makeup. Um, So think Kylie Jenner with her winged eyeliner and the dark contour. And that was the trend at the time was super matte, very large winged eyeliner, like glam type looks. That's what I started with. Were those Jenner girls? You knew about them back then? Yeah. Oh, 2016 man. was like their year. Oh, I didn't know that. They so, had a clothing line, but 
I didn't know that they were already into makeup and all that. Oh yeah. Yeah. It hmm. was a big, big trend back in, in my day. So the makeup. Makeup was my big thing. And I think honestly, that trend has really carried me throughout the rest of my life because mm -hmm. now I know how to do a really good winged eyeliner. Yeah. Now I know how to, you know, make a snatched base. That's yeah. what snatched. snatched. <laughs> That's what we called it. <laughs> um, know how to, to funny. slay, you know? So uh, I think it's really helped me throughout my life. And at the time I had a lot of bad anxiety that I was going through. And mm -hmm. so in the morning before school, I'd be worrying about, you know, I'm going to have a panic attack today. How am I going to get through the day? How am I? All that. And my source of, of mental clarity was putting a full face of makeup on before school. Yeah. And it helped. It helped. Yeah. Well, it always does. Trying yeah. to make yourself feel better. And, and that was all school was about for me. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just what was my hair going to be like and what was I going to wear that day? It wasn't much about learning. Sorry. It just really wasn't. It was more about the social, I think, aspect for me. So next question. What was your first ever concert? Man, I tried to think of this one. I should know it, but I don't think it was REO Speedwagon. I did go to REO Speedwagon, sat in the front row, and I almost fell asleep. I mean, sorry if they're listening. I feel like in any front row of any concert, I wouldn't fall asleep. So uh, that's wild. I, didn't, uh, I was really, I don't know why I was bored. I didn't appreciate them because now I love them because they bring back so many memories. And I love REO Speedwagon, Journey, all of those good 80s bands. But it was either that or um, maybe MC Hammer. <laughs> but And I only remember that one. Because I had a super cute outfit on. Oh <laughs> it was all like light pink. It was a little crop top. And then those like harem pants. I had matching pants to go that with. That does sound cute. It was a cute. It was cute. I think I had like cool like black flats on or something with it. It was very 80s. Big hair. It was all about the great big. Yep. So yeah, that was for me. What about you? So my first live music event was seeing Andy Grammer and opening for Andy Grammer was Alex and Sierra. Oh yeah. I went to that one with you. You did. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't it for my birthday or something. Yes. Cause we loved Alex and oh. Sierra at the time. Now Sierra from Alex and Sierra dumped his ass. <laughs> that was a naughty word. <laughs> well, we're going to swear on this it's podcast. A, we might a little bit. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> dumped his booty. And uh, is now with the lead singer of Five Seconds of Summer, yes. Luke Hemmings, which Five Seconds of Summer was my first like true concert. Yeah. It was like a few months after. So I find that crazy. But yeah. And Alex and Sierra, if you don't know, they were, um, what was the show called? They were on with Simon Cowell. What was that one? It wasn't, was it American Idol? Was it? I can't remember what. It wasn't the voice either. No, it was. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was American Idol. Well, which one did One Direction in in um, England? They were on that one, and that's how they got. I think it was. I feel like it could have been American Idol. No, it wasn't. I no. know for a fact it wasn't. Oh, I gotta look it up now. Oh boy! See, here Brief we go. Intermission. Thank God we have um we have computers like this and we can Google. <gasps> What was it? The X Factor. Oh, the X Factor. Because yep. that's what One Direction came off of, too, I think. That's right. Yes. Yeah. That's how they f they formed all those guys together. So it was the X Factor, not American Idol. Yes. That was like my favorite show back oh, then. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't have been American Idol. It was the X Factor. We used yeah. to watch that faithfully. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were good, though. My they gosh. Were. They oh. were good live, too. But then Five Seconds of Summer really did it for me um, because I was seventh row yeah. and I was obsessed with them at the time. Yeah. And I went with my friend at the time and my aunt mm -hmm. and like it was crazy. I thought I was going to be in the 17th row, mm -hmm. but they changed our tickets last minute. Oh, nice. So we were a good change. 10 rows ahead. And didn't you say the one guy like looked at you or something? Oh, Luke Hemmings? Yeah. yeah. Of course he did. 
Of course he well, did. Well, did he blow you a kiss like Harry Styles did to me? No. Yeah. Harry Styles blew me a kiss. That was the best concert I've ever been to. I'm not jealous. I yeah. Know. It was amazing. We were down in the pit. It was right. It was, it was a year after COVID, wasn't it? It was 2021. Yeah. XL Center. And yeah, we were down in the pit and he was just right there. Like, it was great. He was. You could see his sweat. Oh, he was a great, he's a great performer too. Yeah. Love him. Can't tell you how many dreams I've had about him. He's been in my dreams a lot. Sorry, I know don't he's, need to hear I know about he's that. young. I know he's young. Don't, don't need to hear about your dreams about oh Harry Styles. Oh my gosh, he's just so gorgeous. Okay. okay. Anyway, <laughs> next. <laughs> next question does fit, actually. Uh, who was your first celebrity crush? Okay, well, it wouldn't be Harry Styles because I've had plenty more before that. Mine would have to be either Matt Dillon or Rob Lowe from that great um, vintage movie. It's not really vintage. Um, the Outsiders. It was a book. Yes, it was. Um, I knew that. And Good I, don't job. Read, I don't read books. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, The Outsiders. Oh, my gosh. That was a great cast. Tons of good actors in that movie. Patrick Swayze. There were just Emilio Estevi. I think, um, God, I forget some of Tom Cruise. The Outsiders. Yeah, like the original one. And I had such a crush on Rob Lowe. I think I tried to write him a letter or something. Back then, you would write letters. You couldn't like... You couldn't like Instagram No, DM no, them. none of that. None of that. We, we <laughs> had to put a stamp on it and send it through the mail and hope it gets to them. That's kind of more fun though, I feel like, because imagine you get a letter written back. Well, Colleen did. My sister did from Scott Bale. He was on, on Happy Days. Cha- that's, Chachi. See, that's cool. Chachi, yeah. And you can like hang it up. like. Well, I mean, it was probably like an assistant that signed an autograph and sent it back. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, and it's, you don't know. It's like assistants run Instagram pages. Yeah, that's for true. A lot of celebrities. Yeah. I can't just hit up Nam June from BTS. Uh, no, but you know, you can dream. So that, yeah, yeah, that would have been mine. How about you? I had the Bieber fever. Oh, Justin I Bieber. Loved Justin Bieber. Yeah. I think before that though was Zac Efron. Oh but yeah, high school high musical. school musical. But after that was Justin Bieber and he was like my first like buy merchandise. Yeah, he's screamed whenever he was on the screen. <laughs> like he was really, truly my first love. Yeah. Well, um, he's pretty awesome now, actually. Yeah. He's got a great voice. He has a stunning voice. Yeah. He's got that good Christmas album, too. Okay, oh, what's next? So this one we've kind of shared together let's talk about our first ever plane ride oh well it wasn't your first it wasn't my first plane ride my first plane ride was very uneventful and totally fine this one (laughs) was my first plane ride with with you that was very eventful because it was my first time ever on a plane yeah so and this was like a few years ago this was just a couple years (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it was just a couple of years ago. No, this was in, was it 2019? Yeah, so yeah. a few years ago. <laughs> How sad. Once again, I didn't do much when I was growing up. <laughs> wah, wah. Wah, wah. No, no, we we got on a plane together. It was it sun country. It was very tight. Yes, it was like a sun country flight to Vegas. Went with my sisters and um and my sister's husband. Yeah. And Colleen, my sister and her husband have been to Vegas many, many times. So they kind of knew the drill. Thank God. But yeah. we went to see Journey because we adore Journey. Yes. Um, and they were going to be at Caesars Palace playing there. So we went, we all got on a plane for that. Um, I had never been on a plane before. So it was, it was interesting. We'll yeah. just say you had different words for it. When we landed, I coined the term shit show and a half <laughs> from that whole experience <laughs> because it was truly a shit show and a half. I mean, it's funny, right? Because you go to the airport, you got your cute outfit on, yep. you know, you, you're going to think, OK, I'm comfortable, but I look cute. By the time the plane lands and you get off the plane, I don't know about anyone else, but I was like, I don't care what I have on. You beelined I, towards the bathroom <laughs> I, <laughs> right when we got off the yeah, plane. Well, I... <laughs> I have motion sickness really bad and I thought I could handle it without any um help, aka Dramamine. And I think it was when we got to the mountains, I just 
just could Well, first of all, the takeoff is just the worst, I think. Yeah, I hate the takeoff too. Yeah, because you like people enjoy it. Because you're I don't like, know how? You're like this. You yeah. like go up and then you go down and then you go up. Yeah, no, I didn't like that. Um, and so, but I kind of held on. And then when we got to the mountains, I just. I just remember looking <laughs> over at you and your head is like back. Your eyes are closed. <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pass go, out. I'm going to pass out. I'm about to throw up. I'm about to pass out. I was like, no, you're not. No, I'm you're not. Faint. I kept saying, yes, I am. I kept, you know, you get that feeling when you get the ringing in your ears and you get start to get really hot. I could have seriously fainted. And of course, fainting is like one of my biggest fears. <laughs> one of my biggest fears. Yeah. And so, so you're sitting so next I to me. I start panicking and then yes. I'm like, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to pass out. And then Colleen, my sister, is by the window, and she's like, oh, I need to separate you two. And I took out the little, um, what do you call them, the barf bag or yeah. puke bag. I didn't actually puke. I I feel so sorry for the guy next to me. All the people actually around me, I feel so bad for them. <laughs> One of the girls when we landed was like, oh, you girls were from the plane. Like, oh, it's them. <laughs> no, but I just kind of dry heaved into the little puke bag. I don't know. And then I I just, I didn't feel good. But on, and then you, Colleen had to separate us. She had to somehow, there's like no room to move, but somehow she got over, did she get over you and you went under? Yeah. I don't even remember. There's like no space in that cabin. No, so no, no, no. You idea. had to like slide to the window and she's like, separate you two. And yeah. I had to fold up the tray. The little had my drink sprite. Glass. <laughs> and my sprite Which, in my hand. Hello, sprite crackers didn't work at no. that point. No. But then the plane ride home was much better because yeah. Colleen's like, you two are taking Dramamine. And then I remember on that plane ride back, we had like those teen magazines oh just yeah for fun to look at and colleen looked over at my mom and said i'll give you five dollars if you <laughs> across the aisle to the businessman right across from you ask him to read it she's high on dramamine she goes hey sir excuse me sir you want to read this I'm so serious yeah i was just like hey you want to read this he looked at her like she was insane <laughs> off of something it was just a nice offer it was oh, I, I totally was, would have taken it oh yeah colleen just didn't think i was gonna do it and then at that point i didn't care yeah I'm like we're all up in a plane how high up in the air who cares what yeah. i do i don't think we had even taken off yet though. no we did did we? We probably just had taken off. I don't know. I just remember then I was able to function fine because I just have always wanted to see what an airplane bathroom looks like. Colleen came back with me and we walked all the way back and I got to use the little bathroom. It is teeny tiny. I couldn't believe it. And then when you flush the toilet, it's just gone. It was cool. I don't know. See, when you don't do things, little things like that are really exciting. And that scares me. So I've never been in a plane bathroom. I just hold oh, it. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah I no. can't. I, well, you, I can't hold it. So walking past all those people and I've got like oh, that was pajamas a on, like nice try. That's not happening. Oh, yeah. No, I don't mind. St I didn't mind that. It was, no, it was fun. And it was nice because the flight attendants were back there. And Colleen, of course, is telling them all about how I got sick and, uh, and I was afraid or whatever, whatever. And they're like, one of them actually like dug in her personal lunchbox and pulled out like a little snack. Well, here, give this to your sister. Like, that's so sweet. I know, that's very kind, right? Yeah. But I was fine by then. And then when I love the landing, the landing is my favorite part, actually, of flying. Just coming in hot and you just, it's just violent. And you're just like shaking all over. It's just great. I love that part I don't know of it. If I can agree. Oh, uh, I like the landing because I think I knew like we're almost on the ground. Just get me on the ground. I don't care what happens. Just yeah, you're just happy to be we're here. Yeah. So that was yeah, that was a little bit of a shit show and a half. <laughs> but we made it. And I actually want to fly again. Good. I'm excited to fly again. What's next? How about the first album that you ever bought or listened to? Yeah. Okay. So, well, I mean, growing up on the farm, I had um, six brothers, two sisters, big fa farm family. We always would sit around the album record player and my mom and dad would listen to like the mamas and the papas, which is 
cool that you like them. I love them. Um, yep. And Linda Ronstead, um, Peter, Paul and Mary. So I kind of grew up listening to that. But I think my first, I don't think it was the Monkees, but it was the Grease album from the movie Grease. Great of course, movie. yes. The Bay City Rollers, Sean Cassidy, all those good. Which, we have the Bay City Rollers. Right there. For those watching on video... Yeah. Zoom this is not the album that you bought. No, this no. is no, this is a um we found this one. Yeah. Like, we found this one in a store. But this is the one that we looked at. Is this one that opens up to? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at oh my gosh, everybody from the 70s. There's look one at, named Alan. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Alan, Derek, Woody, Eric, Leslie. Colleen liked Leslie. Um, Anita liked Eric. I think I liked Woody. I didn't like Derek. I mean, I'm sure I liked him, but yeah, that was, that was the Bay City Rollers. That was the album. That's, and you, and they were plaid. So we'd like cut our clothes up and sew plaid on our clothes. And they were from Scotland, I believe. Yes. They're from Scotland. That's cool. It was a big deal. I like their shoes. They're all wearing like Converse. Yeah, they were awesome. You have to kind of Google their music or go on YouTube and find them if you don't know who Bay City Rollers. Okay, Very what was cool. your first? Obviously, like we listened to CDs like my entire life. Yeah. But my first ever album that I like freaked out about and had to get in a store was the One Direction Take Me Home yearbook edition. It was 7 a.m. before school, and I begged her to take me to Walmart. Absolutely begged I, you. I can't believe that. And you took me to Walmart, and they didn't even have them on the floor yet, and I was like, I need to get this album. And we album. had to get to school. I can't believe I did that for you. Yeah. I would have. I would never do that now. <laughs> I know you wouldn't. 7, 7 a.m. <laughs> but... It it was like so important for me to get it, and that is still such a really good album. Well, you didn't you convince me that it would be gone by the time you got yeah. out of school? Oh, and it totally would have. Look at you liked my boyfriend way back then. Of course, I set the trend. Harry obviously. Styles, <laughs> Harry Styles, <laughs> and then he broke off. Harry Styles was part of One Direction. Then he broke off and went on his own. Which I met someone. The other day, I was talking to one of my friends. He didn't know who Harry Styles was. Oh, people still don't know who still he is. Still didn't know who okay, Harry okay, Styles okay. was. Okay, now you might know him. He used to date Taylor Swift, didn't they, for a little bit? For a little bit. For yeah, a little bit. That's not yeah. really a match. I think she yeah. wrote a song about him, but I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not too deep into the Taylor Swift lore. Yeah, I'm not either. I think she's fantastic, though, yeah. and I think what she's doing is great I, for, I like her music I yeah. think she makes great music yeah I sing yeah. along to her music in the car yeah yeah she's cool I like her yeah I mean the, the whole football guy thing I don't Travis. know Travis yeah Travis whatever his name is you don't care for Travis <laughs> well didn't they win the fo the Super Bowl they did yeah well that's good good for them I'm sure they worked very hard <laughs> I'm not I'm just not into sports <laughs> Although I, would, I, I kind of would so. like to watch. Go, we should go to a Twins game. That would be fun. Minnesota Twins. Oh, be because fun. their colors are gray, red, white, and blue. We could really come up with good outfits for that. See, it's all about the outfit. It's always all about the outfit. Not about gonna, the baseball whatsoever. No. Well, although those guys look pretty good in their baseball uniform. <laughs> I should have known that's where that was going. <laughs> okay, moving on. All right, moving on. Moving on. We'll do a first that changed your life. Just any first in your life. Well, of course, my Farrah Fawcett haircut. Um, well, of course, I mean, really having kids is the the biggest life game changer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I not I wouldn't say getting married. I mean, it did yeah. a little bit, but um, but really changed my life for the better, and really made my mom and dad so happy as I was crowned Miss Foley, queen of my town. <laughs> so your first time ever being a princess. Well, actually, I was a dairy princess first, and then the Miss Foley pageant was okay. after that. And it was just such an honor. You're just, a, you're just, you're an ambassador for your city. And, and that's kind of how I got to travel around to other cities because yeah. you got to ride in parades and it was, yeah. it was great fun. It was just great. And it made my mom and dad so proud yeah. and that was a great feeling. Yeah. So I would say that in high school and then getting married and having kids, a baby 
having a baby will change your life <laughs> yeah, big time i'd say so yeah what about you for me it was the first um bts video i ever watched a video mm-hmm. which one was it it was dope i was at a birthday party in 2015 i don't remember that song dope yeah i don't remember that one they all dress up as different occupations and they're in a dark room okay i think i remember that because i remember what they wear yeah in the videos yeah j-hope is a race car driver oh i think i remember it now bts bts if you don't know bts you're gonna hear a lot about bts on this podcast you're a bts fan um being a fan of them and following them since 2015 almost 10 years has completely changed my life. So that watching that video was the moment that I learned about them and the moment I became obsessed with them. Mm-hmm. And throughout that time, I've traveled throughout the United States to see them live. And I've gone through so many cool experiences because of their music. And thank God you have an aunt, my sister, yes. who is willing to, because she loves also, them as well. She's probably more obsessed with them at this yeah. point than I am. But They've opened up so many doors for me, Mm -hmm. and so I've had so many experiences because I've liked their music. I've made a lot of friends on the internet because Mm -hmm. of BTS, and they've completely just changed my mindset at, like, a time when I was so insecure because I was in, like, high school and had no idea what I was going to do, and you're experiencing... All of those emotions, I had BTS to lean on yeah. on my worst days. I would listen to their music and their message is just to love yourself and be you 100% yeah, isn't of their, the time. Their plat- what do you call it? Their platform, isn't it mental health? Yeah. And they're from South Korea. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're oh, they dress amazing. They're just an amazing group yeah. of talent and their talent is so incredible yeah please like if you haven't listened to them go and watch one of their videos um listen to some of their music look up the lyrics because they stand for such an amazing yeah um they have such an amazing platform that they've created yeah they're pretty cool so that really changed my life was watching that video yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. I, re- I remember it. I remember hmm. it like it was yesterday. It's all, almost been 10 years and they're all uh in the army. They right all now. are now? They Every all one are. of them? Every one of them is in the army right now. Oh, yeah. even the one who speaks really good English. Yep. Which one is he? Nam June. Yeah. He went in too? Yep. They all are. They all have mm-hmm. to. What is the rule in South Korea? They have um, to. When you're a man mm-hmm. living in Korea... When you get to a certain age, you have to serve in the military for a certain amount of time. Okay, so now their group is on a hiatus. Yes. Before, and they have to get their times put in, and then do you yes. think they'll get back together and make more music? Yes, in 2025 they are. Oh, they are? Yes. Okay, well maybe I'm going to have to go to one of these concerts. You have to. Okay. You have to experience it. Yeah, because... It's so life changing going to these concerts. Yeah. Any seat at a BTS concert is a good seat. Well, because you can get one. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's hard to hard to get hard to get a seat. Very hard at their... to get their concert tickets. But well, that's very cool. A lot of good firsts. There's so many others, but we can't talk about all of them. Yeah. So, do you want to do the three favorites? Yes. Yes. Now we're gonna get into our three favorites for the week. Which I say we just go click okay. through them. Okay. You want to go first? Yes. All right. Your so three favorites. My three favorites. Um, one is an album. It's Stick Season Forever by Noah Kahn. Okay. If you could put a sound to the Midwest, it would be Noah Kahan's music. Mm. Okay. Like when I think of Los Angeles, I think of The Weeknd. Mm-hmm. His music is very L.A. coded. Yeah. But when I think of the Midwest, I think of Noah Kahan. So living here and listening to his music. And I don't know who that is. You <laughs> need to I know will. who that I is. Maybe I've heard his music before and I just don't. 
I've put a few songs of his yeah. on the playlist at the prob- store. So. Okay. I probably know him. <laughs> yeah. So absolutely love his album, Duolingo. What's that? Duolingo is my Spanish learning app oh. that I have. <laughs> Um, That's right. I am on. <laughs> what day am I on with my streak? You're like 160. 100. I'm on day 161 of my Duolingo streak. Good for you. Um, I recommend that everybody download that app. We're not sponsored yet. <laughs> um, everybody should download that app. Pick a language that you want to learn, and seriously, it takes two minutes a day. Wow, two minutes a day to just do one lesson and learn a learn another. I would kind of like to learn how to speak French. You can do that. Oh, or maybe I should. It really, truly is so cool to talk to people and listen to people in mm-hmm. Spanish and to be able to understand them. Yeah. It's a completely different feeling than understanding someone in English. Yeah. Because I've known English my whole life. Right. But now learning a second language and hearing someone speak and knowing what they're saying. Yeah. I feel like I unlocked an entire part of the world. Which is crazy because you had those in high school. Oh, yeah. Didn't you start them like in ninth grade? You have to to pick up. In middle school. Oh, yeah. You have to pick up a second language. It should be required. Yeah. Everyone should kind of. Yeah. I could do that. I would rather like learn a new language than learn how to swim. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that has nothing to do with nothing, but I could do a new language, but I could not learn. I just don't want to go in the water. Yeah. Like, no. Neither do I. Okay. <laughs> not feeling, not feeling you, that caught you off guard. It but did. That, like if I had to do something, try something new, I'll do the language before the swimming. But anyway, okay, you have one more. I do have one more. Um, I'm going to say my sourdough starter. Oh gosh, this is so weird. I have just learned how to create a beautiful loaf of sourdough bread and it starts with a sourdough starter. And so I started it. That's so crazy that you know about that. I'm on day three and it has bubbles. Yeah, you showed me that. I'm like, what is that in the jar over there? It's just flour and water. And it grows? It grows it's like yeast. alive. It's yeast. <laughs> It's just weird. I don't know. I just like that is just not something fun. I just. It's so fun. I mean, it's cool, though. Like, that's probably what they did back in the since the beginning of time. Maybe Jesus did that. I don't know. Who knows? Jesus just making a loaf of sourdough bread for the people. (laughs) Did they have unleavened bread, which unleavened doesn't have? I have no idea. Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying since the beginning of time, that's probably how they. Oh, yeah. There will. You can have a sourdough starter for as long as you want. Like this sourdough starter that I created three days ago could outlive me. That's just And I could give it to my grandkids and they could carry on the tradition (laughs) of making sourdough bread. That is just so weird. And it's going to taste good. Like how excited you are about that. That's so cool. <laughs> okay. I feel like a scientist in a lab well, that and just you, like created an yeah. amalgamation of something. That's very cool. So we'll see how my first loaf turns out. I have to wait seven days. Okay. After I start it. Well, I made a pan of brownies. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> From the box. From the box. <laughs> From the box. You can make sourdough starter brownies. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you can do that. Okay. Maybe we'll have to try that. Yeah, I don't... And it's good for you, too. That's why I don't know about it. Because it's good for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. That's very cool, though, that you did that. I'm very excited. Yeah. Very... I recommend if you're going to, st- uh, just real quick, if you're going to make a sourdough starter, use rye to start. Okay. Because rye has a higher percentage of gluten something. Isn't it gluten-free? Sourdough is. Sourdough bread is gluten-free, isn't it? It's not gluten-free. Oh. But a lot of people that are gluten-free typically can eat sourdough bread. Oh, okay. Because it works okay. Cool. Don't know why that is. Don't I don't understand how any of this works. Again, I just started three days ago. And I'm yeah. So you're fun you like watching a bubble. It's so cool. <laughs> it's like growing up. It's so cool. Well, it's like that thing you got that one time. Was it a what was it up in water? Was it a plant or something? In water? It was like alive. It was kind of scary looking. 
It wasn't a fish. It was like a plant or something. It just looked like a little blob and you said it was like a lie. Oh, yeah, yeah. The moss ball. Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? Who yeah, even you can keep moss balls in water. You have to change out their water. But that's just, just like a fish. Just weird. That's just weird. I don't... <laughs> I she knows about all this stuff. I killed I my moss ball. Oh, well, okay, there I you go. I was too scared to change the water because <laughs> I was afraid it was going to smell bad. Oh, so you just threw it out? So I just threw it away. Oh. It's probably still out there living somewhere, could be. thriving off the land. It could be. That's a nice thing to. That's a good way to think about it, Hannah. Oh my goodness, it that's crazy. Okay, okay. It my three. I don't know if I have like full on three. Um, definitely. Um, my grandbaby stayed with us and that's a whole podcast. If you're a grandma, first time grandma and watching your grandchildren, she was just a joy, but there were little things that I didn't expect out of a little, um, two year old, like a side eye and, and roll her eyes. And by the way, I've been cleaning up around the house and finding little peas everywhere. She likes frozen peas. And I made, I kind of, I cooked them when I, cause I thought she was, well, she likes peas. I'm going to cook them. And she gave me the side eye and rolled her eyes when I asked her to eat them. And she, you came home and told me, no, she likes them frozen. Yeah. She likes to eat the peas frozen right out of the bag, which I think is crazy. Um, so I've been finding little peas all over and I've been cleaning. Um, but really, I think just what an experience that was that that she slept with me and that was interesting. Um, she's just an amazing little girl. I'm sure that you'll hear more and more about her. I talk about her all the time at the store. So for me, I would say just that and all. Oh, I'm kind of addicted now. I've had so many people telling me to watch Virgin River on Netflix. And I've never had the time really. We used to have our little dog. We don't have her with us anymore. Um, God bless you, Lily. Um, but she barked all the time and it was hard for me to sit down and just watch something from beginning to end. But I've been watching Virgin River. I think I'm on the second season. I think they're still making but now I'm addicted. Now I'm like addicted to these characters, which That's is good. A, between that and The Bachelor. I stopped oh, watching yes. The Bachelor and now I am all in. I am Team Daisy. Daisy from um, Becker, yes. Minnesota. Um, she's an amazing person. I would love to meet her. She should come to the store and I'll let her pick out a bunch of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, she's a great, she just seems like a great person and he's adorable. His name is Joey. The Bachelor. So kind of those two things. I'm not used to watching and getting invested in shows like that, um, but definitely hooked on those and can't wait to um, get home and kind of watch a couple episodes of Virgin River. Which makes me so happy that you have that as a hobby now. Because when I get home, <laughs> when I get home, I go straight to my computer and I like watch all the YouTubers that I watch. Yeah. yeah. And I like listen to podcasts and I read yeah. books and I put Legos together and I, like the whole nine yards. Yeah. And when you get home, you're usually just like, okay, <laughs> I think I'm going to do the dishes. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you're welcome, by the way. way. Which thank you. Yes. <laughs> And I'm like, well, why don't you just like relax, well, watch a TV show or no, something? No, it's TikTok is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah. It's TikTok. But this has gotten me off of TikTok. That's awesome. Now that I'm kind of watching um, these kind of shows, I'm not as addicted to TikTok as. That's good. So, yeah. That's good. Should we do a card? Yes, we'll do a card and then that'll be the end of the episode. The first episode. We're going to yeah. do these cards every week. Yeah. Um. Do you want to hold my microphone? Yeah. So I'm going to shake them. These are called empowerment cards. Yes. Which I think is pretty amazing. Um. I've talked about wanting to um, leave you with a message for the week and a positive message and I was struggling with, well, what messages? Uh, is something going to come to my head? But I just feel it's really important to say something, get something positive out there. And then lo and behold, Hannah like opens up one of her little secret drawers and has these like empowerment cards that she got. I'm like as a wizard. A, I have you everything. Are, you are like a wizard. And she has the per. And I start reading. I'm like, oh, my God, these are absolutely perfect. So I'm going to shuffle and I'm going to pick a card. And yes, that will be. Yes. Yeah. Shuffling. 
And that will be the message for your day, for the week. Take it however it resonates with you. I'm just going to go like this, and I'll just pull one out, and I'll read it. Everything is within your power, and your power is within you. So that's going to yes. definitely, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's definitely someone needed to hear that today. So yes. always remember that. So this has been fun. This has been very fun. I look forward to doing this yes. with you. I think it's great that we can get along without pulling each other's hair out. Right? <laughs> it's just be the fun. third episode. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> give it, give it time. Give it a little bit of time. But thank you so much, you guys, for watching yes. and listening. We appreciate that. Yes. If you made it this far thank you for listening yeah we appreciate you thank you for watching if you're watching yeah um again if you're listening you can watch and if you're watching you can listen spotify youtube everything like that so yeah thank you for watching listening and we'll see you next monday all right have a great week everybody bye bye We did it. <laughs>